Boy, if you thought I enjoyed sewing for the holidays, you should see me around the family dining table. I just love to eat, but boy, I get a little bit messy. Of course, I get really involved in my meal, right? So I've got a great holiday project for you today at Man Sewing. We've got these awesome little napkins. Let's get started. I'm gonna walk you through the basics of making these awesome circular napkins. And about halfway through, I'll even talk to you about some of the options for trim as well. It's a super, super simple project. I'm using these great penguins. These are from Robert Kaufman Fabrics. And then I've just got a solid to match on the back side. Of course, you can do whatever you like, make it fun, of course. So before we get even into making the circles, you need a half yard of your solid, you need a half yard of your print. The half yard will generally yield about three of these napkins because I'm using a 14 inch diameter. You can make these whatever size you want, but keep in mind, I can only get three circles out of a half yard of fabric if I'm using 14 inches. So keeping that in mind, I also have created for myself a little template using some mylar here. In the description below, you know we have the printables. On that printable is this shape for you, as well as the wonderful instructions like this that will teach you how to fold up your little circular napkins into the tree when we're all finished, okay? So, in order to make sure I had the fabric I needed, I actually took my 18 inches wide, my half yard, and I pre-cut them down into rectangles that were also 14 and a half, okay? Once I had that done of my print, and of my solid, I want to go ahead and fold these into basically quarters. I know they're not a perfect quarters because a rectangle doesn't fold into quarters. I did love my geometry class. I'm going to also hit these with the iron briefly because I want these creases and I also don't want that heavy fold in there because I'm going to cut these with that lightweight template. And when cutting with the lightweight template, things will tend to shift a little bit if you're not careful. So the pressing here will help. And when we're done, this is going to be a washable project. So you may want to even pre-wash your fabrics in advance. Double check your math. Some fabric shrinks a little bit more. That 14 might be a little tight. Okay, let's focus what we're doing here because we need to make sure we cut this and we get a circle because we're using a quarter circle template, okay? So here's my fold. This is my raw edge, my raw edge here. So I've got a fold and a fold. I have a fold and I have a fold and I'm going to lay those right on top of each other, just like that. And then I'm going to take that little template I created and set aside. And I'm going to line it up in the corner, down here, the corner that is where all of the folds are coming together. And we are gonna cut a print and a solid together because this napkin is going to be this napkin, right? I can almost guarantee you I'm not gonna cut a perfect, perfect circle. So by cutting both of them at the same time, I'm at least making them match. Okay, now another trick here, being careful of my fingers and trying not to cut into my template, a fresh rotary blade, and watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start to do a little bit of a sawing motion, a little bit of a back and forth as I go. And what this is helping me do is keep all of those layers nice and flat without having to have my fingers too close because this lightweight mylar will not protect my hands from the blade if I start to jump over. So look at that sawing motion. That's really helpful when you're doing this kind of stuff and it's keeping my fabric from shifting just like that. And I have a wonderful clean cut but, and my fabric didn't travel too much on me, okay? So I like that tip. Now we're going to also benefit from those creased lines. I don't know if you can see them or not, but as I open this up, we're gonna go right sides together and I'm going to simply line those creases right back up because what that helps me do is make sure if I had any spots that weren't perfectly round, they at least match, okay? We're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. You can use cotton or polyester thread because again, this is more of a washable garment style project, okay? I've got a little edge guide on here and I'm gonna simply use a, about a or excuse me, leave about a one inch opening as we get started. So I'm gonna backstitch. Little back stitch there. And now I'm just putting a little bit of pressure out here on this hand to keep that fabric right up against that edge guide. And then I'm pulling over here with my left hand a little bit, not tugging, just keeping the fabric out here. And that keeps all the layers traveling together in a circular motion. 
If you see that you have any flat spots in your cutting, you can round them out by a nice stitch line. No one will see if it's rough seam allowance on the inside. We're already halfway there, so I'm gonna speed it up and finish this out, leaving about a one inch opening. Okay, as we're coming into that opening, I just want to backstitch uh, just enough, and I want to leave just enough opening that I can get in there and work, but not have to struggle too much when I'm going to top stitch this to finish. So nice and flat, a good circle. At this point, if you had any of your fabric move faster than the other, you might have started to create a bit of an arc or a bowl shape. Take out your seam ripper and just start over. It won't press flat. You want it to be just like that when you're done, okay? Cut those seam allowances, and now I'm just going to start to turn this right sides out, and when I'm dealing with a circle like this or something big, I'll try to get a hold just a little bit of the right sides, and then I'm just slowly going to pull it out as I work through here. Okay, so once we have it almost open, before we iron it, I like to use my purple thing, like this here, and I'm gonna go inside my seam allowance, and I'm going to really push hard on the seam, the sewing line that we just did, because that really helps get all of those notches out. It's funny, I know I just said notches out. I was thinking a lot of you may have learned to notch or put little clips when you're making circular seam allowances. And that was going through my brain. And as a matter of fact, it's not a bad idea at all. It's not necessary on something this large without much of an arc, but if you want to do it, if it's how you learn to do it, by all means, do what makes you happy, right? We're supposed to enjoy our craft. Okay, now, here we are at the iron. When I'm preparing for top stitching, even though I've used that purple thing, I'm also kind of pinching and trying to get as much of that seam all the way to the edge. I can actually see little bits of my thread, which makes me so happy, because that means I've got it all the way exposed. And you'll notice I'm actually working the seam first, and then I'm gonna come back and work the middle. Okay, so we're almost done here. And then let's talk about some trimming options as well. A couple ideas to discuss here. Okay, so that's awesome. Now, if you look carefully at this cute little napkin, I added on some of the micro rickrack, right? This little baby rickrack. And that's super cute, and that was done as a top stitch because it's so small, it would get lost in the seam allowance, right? So I'm gonna actually show you how to do that one here in a second. So I better put it here so I don't forget, right? However, I was also playing with the ideas of something like this, like the big jumbo rickrack. Now look how large this is, right? So if you want to do something like the jumbo rickrack and it bends really nicely, you would have wanted to put that in the seam allowance. So before you even got to this step, you would have put all three layers together so that that really big trim would have been between the right sides. And then the other option, which I think is super cute, but I am gonna caution you, I did struggle with this one a little bit, is these little mini ball trims. They're awesome, but you'll wanna use a zipper foot if you're doing something like that. And I do recommend this as a top stitch as well because that, that little ribbing or welting or whatever we call that, that little band that you're supposed to stitch onto, it was really narrow. And so when I was doing that as a sample, I didn't sew it so well. So you notice I used the rickrack for my example for today's show, right? Another thing when you're putting in trim, any trim has a bit of uh, stretch or flex to it. So that could also cause a bit of a bowing or cupping effect. So you just go real nice and slow. You might even want to put a couple dabs of basting glue every inch or so just to really help yourself get that trim in there nice, right? But I want to just, again, focus on the basics. I just wanted to share a few of those ideas with you today because I get so excited around this time of year. Okay, so we're back over to our standard setup so far. I have to look and find that seam allowance. There it is, or I mean the uh, opening I'm trying to say from the seam allowance. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna capture this. Okay, and the reason we talked about the trim first is I wanted to know what I was gonna do before I started stitching it closed. So first we're gonna anchor this closed so it doesn't open accidentally on us. My top stitching, I'm a little closer to the edge than the seam guide is gonna allow, so I'm just gonna take it out of the way so I don't rely on it. And now I'm gonna come around here quickly 
and I'm gonna close that edge. But then as soon as I have the edge closed, because I don't want two rows of stitching on the back, I'm gonna get my rick rack ready, and I'm just gonna leave it right here. I'm not even gonna worry about what size to cut it. And now I'm gonna lift up my presser foot, and I'm gonna drop that rick rack right where the needle's gonna start to land. And I'm gonna slowly start to stitch. And I'm just placing that needle right in the rick rack, and I'm doing my best to not tug or add any extra tension to the rick rack, because that will cause it to cup. And listen to how slow the machine's going. Just one stitch at a time, one stitch at a time. And what I'm gonna do is finish this out nice and beautiful for you and show you the end. I'll be right back. Okay, so we are almost to that finish edge. You can actually maybe even see that I've got that first lower layer of top stitching. So I really wanna try to park my needle right on top of the top stitch, just so you can't see a second layer of stitching on the back. And we're just gonna do about a half of an inch of overlap of my rick rack. And if I'm really lucky, like I have gotten today, I actually have been able to place the hips and valleys right on top of each other, so it'll almost be unnoticeable. I'm gonna slip my scissor in here and just trim the rick rack now that I've made the join. I'm gonna come around to finish, put a little back stitch on that for us, and we are all done. We need to cut up our thread from where we started, of course. Check the back, looks pretty sharp. Now, let's say for example, you had stitched over this here and you didn't love that, we could actually take those threads out now because we've already captured that whole top stitch, not a problem at all. But we have one last thing to do today and that's to learn how to fold up our napkins, right? So again, I have that print out in the description below, there's a link for you. And if you look, real carefully. Um, maybe I can see my crease lines already in here. Nope, I can't, so we're gonna do this raw. So first step is we're gonna fold it in half like that. Now, if you've done this enough times, you kind of start to get this accordion fold method down like that, but what it really was, okay, so it was in half. You can kind of put a hand in here and it's gonna fold. See how it comes over on the fold like that? So then this part is gonna fold back on itself. So sometimes I'll use my finger up in there and pinch. And then what you can do is you can put those together so nicely in a nice little box and wrap them up wonderfully because they make a great presentation for a Christmas gift when they come out of the box. And you've got these wonderful, cute little homemade napkins that look like holiday trees, fantastic. One last idea, as you can tell, I'm just so excited about this. You can make these really large, you can even kind of quilt it a little bit and it can go on like as a, a small circular table runner, go under a beautiful plant that you give as a gift. The ideas are endless, I'm so charged because I just love the holiday season. So, here's what I wanna know from all of you. What is the favorite gift you've ever given to somebody? And while you're thinking on that, I gotta get back in my studio so we can get some awesome stuff going next time at Man Sewing.